Hello and welcome to another episode of the Indie Author Mindset Podcast with me, Adam Croft. It's good to have you here. Um, hello to a lot of new listeners we've picked up in the last week or two. Uh, welcome to you. This podcast is gratefully sponsored by Ingram Spark, the award-winning indie publishing platform that offers authors like you a way to get your paperbacks and hardbacks into over 40,000 bookstores and libraries worldwide. Let Ingram Spark take care of the details so you can focus on what you do best, which is writing. Get started today at ingramspark.com. And there's a few days left until the end of May so that you can get free title setup and revisions that runs through until may 31st enter the code ingramspark2020 when you're uh, publishing your book and you'll get free title setup and revisions which is normally 50 dollars a book so you're uh, saving quite a fair bit there I'm going to get straight into the business, as I tend to do, and I saw an interesting report this week from Kalytics, who mentioned that search volume on Google for erotic literature has dropped by more than 60% over the last five years, so maybe the erotica bubble has burst. There's a, a picture for you. By contrast, Clean and wholesome is the romance category that has experienced extraordinary sales growth, according to Kalytics. And apparently they say, and they study these things in great details, as you would know if you've ever um, bought and downloaded and tried to digest a Kalytics report. Um, unlike many other romance genres, clean romance is not yet overcrowded. It's apparently been one of the most resilient romance categories during the recent lockdown period, and sales ranks even improved during March and April. Now, of course, my advice will not be to shift and rebrand. If you're writing crime and thrillers or uh, dystopian fiction, then don't suddenly shift and start writing clean and wholesome romance because it's doing quite well. Um, that will cause its own issues and problems in and of itself. But if it's already a part of your writing, if you're a romance writer who's perhaps dipping your toes into a few different areas or if you're you've perhaps got some clean romance books out there that you're not doing a whole lot with i'm going to stop bashing my microphone now um, if it's already a part of your writing a part of your oeuvre then it might focus your mind and might make you want to perhaps start pushing those a little bit more because um, clean and wholesome romance, according to Kalytics, is growing massively. Um, I would highly recommend looking at those uh, Kalytics reports, by the way. They release them every now and again on different genres, different parts of the market. They do some uh, massive data studies and experimentation and have a look at what's selling, what's doing well, what you should be doing with your books, where you might want to focus and uh, the, the general direction you might want to take your business in. So highly recommend those. Some more news to come out this week was, um, you might have mentioned me, you might have heard me mention even, talking on previous episodes of the Indie Author Mindset podcast about BookBub audiobook ads. These have been in testing mode for quite a while. I've been testing them myself uh, for BookBub for a few months now, and they are now live. And anybody can now set up a BookBub audio ad. This really is very exciting. The audio ads are extremely handy. They're pretty much, other than trying to do Facebook ads for them, which tends not to work, they're pretty much the only way to effectively advertise audiobooks um, which have seen enormous growth over the last year or two. It's only possible, though, if you are wide with your audio. The reason for that is BookBub audio ads uh, won't take the uh, person seeing the ad, the clicker. They won't take them through to Audible or to anywhere else or to Apple or iTunes. They will take them through to the Chirp product page for that book. Chirp, of course, owned by BookBub, so they're not going to send them to anybody else's store, are they? Um, you can only get onto Chirp if you are wide with your audio. So if you've gone direct to Audible, if you've given them exclusive rights, which you often do for, I think, six or seven years, um, not just the 90 days that KU asks for, then you won't be able to do BookBub audio ads. But if you're wide with your audio, um, then you can. I recommend going through Findaway Voices. That gets you into Chirp. The exciting thing about BookBub audio ads, to quickly cover this again, is that it's a BookBub product. They know what they're doing. They've got the data. They've got an audience of more than one million 
uh, audiobook listeners in their in their audience, and they have data on the whole customer journey now. So they are in charge of the ads platform, and they can see who's clicking through. They can see um, who's buying the audiobooks and what they're doing when they get there because they own the retailer, they own Chirp. They've got data on that whole journey. So the, the possibilities there really are endless. Um, if you want to get set up, if you've got wide audio that is with Findaway Voices and is available on Chirp, then go to your BookBub ads dashboard, go to create a new ad and select audiobook listeners ad sorry bit of a frog in my throat there <laughs> um but yes you can't do it if you are uh, exclusive to acx if you have set up an audiobook on acx and you've not done a royalty share agreement but you've um, bought and paid for the audiobook yourself and you own the full rights to it and full royalties if the book has been live um for more than a year then acx will if you ask them usually let you out of that and then you'll be able to go wide with your audio so you're not necessarily tied in for six or seven years if you're on a royalty share you are um, you'll need to come to an arrangement with your narrator on that and probably pay them off and then both ask ACX to let you out that does sometimes work as well but if you've got audiobooks on ACX which you've had produced yourself you paid for in full and have been up there for more than a year then email them ask to be let out um, and to um, be able to go wide with your audio and they will let you do that your royalty rate will drop from 40 percent to 25 percent but you'll be able to sell on all of those other vendors and as i mentioned before there are for me now three or four which sell more audiobooks than audible so audible is far from being the be all and end all now some other news actually on uh, wide and this has been a big thing this week especially in the uh, indie author mindset facebook group a lot of people have been commenting on how they've gone wide recently and seen massive massive sales growth on these other vendors compared to amazon um, a lot of them have done my sell more books wide course and have picked up all the tips from there and have made um, immediate improvements i think david lyons posted in the group this week um he's been wide for a week and he's already um, selling about the same as he was when he was exclusive to Amazon. He's, a lot of people will tell you that it can take you months to build out that audience, but it's just not the case. Um, Kobo has seen huge growth in ebook sales in the last year. Year on year sales um, from I think it was March 2019 to March 2020 went up 60%. So huge growth there. Kobo is now home to more than 5 million ebooks. Um, in addition, April 2020 was up 30% on March 2020. Um, Kobo Safe Fiction sales are up 110% year on year. Crime is up 127%. Thrillers are up 157%. And historical fiction is up 285%. That one really jumped out at me because historical fiction and anything historically based has largely been touted as one of the genres that does very, very well in Kindle Unlimited seems now that is uh, that is possibly changing nearly 300 percent growth on kobo in historical fiction in the last year so if you're thinking of going wide now is possibly the time and remember you don't need to wait for that 90 day period to pass if you're in kdp select if you want to get out you don't need to wait 90 days until the period ends, just contact them through your KDP dashboard. Use email, not the phone. The people on the phone will tell you no, but the people on email will let you out if you ask. If you tell them you want to come out of KDP Select, you will normally be out, in my experience, within a few hours. This is something I did five years ago when I left Kindle Unlimited and never looked back when I left KDP Select. And it's something people are still doing now. People have mentioned it in the group this week that they've uh, come out in the last week or two. They've had um, emails that they've sent saying, I want to come out. And within an hour or two, they're, they're, they're free. And they're putting their books up on these other platforms and doing absolutely brilliantly, which is great news. Um, more on the Kobo front. <laughs> And I realise I'm rattling through this to try and get it all out. Um, big week news-wise. Kobo Plus. This is Kobo's subscription service, very much like Kindle Unlimited, but with the added bonus that it is not 
um, going to lock you in to Kobo at all. They have no exclusivity clause. If you publish your books through Kobo, you can have them in Kobo Plus, which is their equivalent of KU. But without locking you in, they say you're completely free to sell your books and have them on other platforms. Um, not the sort of thing that, that worries Kobo in the slightest. Up until now, that was only available in the Netherlands and I think Belgium. And I got some borrows and some payouts through that over the, the last couple of years. But the big news now is that Kobo Plus is rolling out in Canada. Now, Canada is Kobo's biggest market. Um, Kobo is Canada's biggest ebook platform. It is far bigger than Amazon there. Kobo Plus now is a real contender to KU. It's certainly heading that way. Now that Canada and Canadian readers are able to borrow Kobo books, uh, if they're in Kobo Plus, that is, and you'll get paid out on those reads, and you don't need to worry about uh, any exclusivity periods. No demands at all there from Kobo. So make sure, if your books are published with Kobo, if they are wide, Go in and double check, make sure they are enrolled in the Kobo Plus program. It costs you nothing to do so. There's really no reason not to, but you do need to opt into it. And you might find that your books aren't uh, aren't opted in already. So go back, double check, make sure that those books are, um, are, are in Kobo Plus. And then when that rolls out in Canada and starts to build there, you can make the most of that growth that they're seeing and that we talked about earlier. In the Indie Author Mindset Facebook group this week, and I think that might have been the first breath I took in the 11 and a half minutes we've been doing this show, this episode, um, Kate Minchin asked, um, she said she discovered the first pirate copy of her book and asked if anyone was familiar with the uh, particular website, which I'm not going to name here for obvious reasons. She says, is it worth worrying about? It certainly annoys the hell out of me. I've only been publishing this series since April, and this was one marker of being an author that I wasn't waiting for. Well, that's one way of looking at it. It is a mark of having made it as an author that people are looking to get hold of your books. Not necessarily great, they don't want to pay for them, but my way of looking at this would be to tell you that, to be honest with you, people who pirate things aren't going to buy them anyway. People who download films and torrent uh, movies... They're, they're probably not going to be going out and buying DVDs and, and Blu-ray discs. And the same goes for people who torrent books and who pirate those. They're, they're not going to buy them anyway. They don't value um, what you're doing. They don't put a financial value on it. They think they should be free to consume this stuff, but that you should not be paid for what you're doing. The, the same principle applies when I talk about Kindle Unlimited and I talk about perma-free um, and trying not to get freebie seekers who only want to read your books without paying for them. They're not the sort of readers that you want. You can't, you know, we don't boast about how many readers you've got. It's how many books you've sold. And that's what matters. It's who's actually going to give you a long-term future career as an author and that's what the indie author mindset is all about it's all about looking at the long term building for the future uh, constantly developing your career moving yourself on to the next stage increasing uh, your your fan base increasing the number of people who are who are willing to actually pay for your books because this isn't something we do as a hobby if you're uh, well versed in the indie author mindset, uh, mindset, I guess, for want of a better word, then you know this is all about the long term. It's all about building a career for yourself and accepting that you run a small business. So these things are going to happen. I guess this is um, this is similar to if you run a shop and you get shoplifters. You, you kind of accept that it happens. Of course, you do what you can to minimise it. And there are things you can do. You can report um, breaches of, of piracy acts and, and copyright acts. But to be honest with you, it takes time. It's rarely successful. Um, and it's probably more hassle than it's worth. I would go out on a limb here and say it's probably better that you spend your time writing new books, advertising the ones you've got and looking forward rather than worrying about people who are trying to knock you down because largely they don't matter. Um, that is about it, I think, for this week. If you have joyed, enjoyed, or joyed, I guess, the podcast, and if you get value from the Indie Author Mindset community, please do consider joining the Indie Author Mindset Patreon program. 
If you join today, you'll get a personalised thank you on next week's podcast. You'll get a free Indie Author Mindset book of your choice, access to exclusive Patreon-only hints, tips and strategies that I post in the group uh, every few days. You'll get this podcast early. Um, For example, this one is going out on Wednesday lunchtime-ish, but I'm recording on Sunday morning, first thing, which is why I sound a little bit croaky. Um, This will be going out straight away. So that's what, one, two, three, four days early, you can get the Indie Author Mindset podcast. Um, If you are a patron, you will also get priority one-on-one help and coaching from me via the Patreon messaging system. You get a free course, a free copy of each new book as it's released, all sorts of stuff. And it begins, pardon me, from only $2, which is $2 that could revolutionize your author career. Your support does help keep the podcast and the Indie Author Mindset project running. It genuinely does. Helps me to keep empowering indie authors and to gather that knowledge for you and help build a better future for you. So if you do want to support the podcast and you do want to to support the project, you can tell it's a a Sunday morning. I almost called it a Monday. That's how bad it is. Uh, If you do want to support the project, head over to patreon.com forward slash indie author mindset or check out the link in the show notes i will see you back here next week hopefully for another episode this episode of the indie author mindset podcast was presented by me adam croft the indie author mindset podcast is sponsored by ingram spark helping you get your book into over forty thousand bookstores and libraries worldwide Get started today at ingramspark.com. The theme music for this podcast is by the Caesarians. Don't forget you can claim 50% off any Indie Author Mindset course by entering the promo code PODCAST at the checkout. Links are in the show notes. For more great tips and guidance, join the Indie Author Mindset group on Facebook. Facebook.